Hello chess lovers, so we're in here and I have another fascinating game for you. This game was played between two unknown chess players, Inbaud and Strumilo. This was a correspondence game played in 1922. Now let's see how the game went on. Inbaud started the game with e4 and d5 by Strumilo. We see the Scandinavian defense or this is also called the center counter defense, which is one of the oldest recorded openings. First recorded game with this opening was played in 1475 in Valencia. e takes d5 was played and knight f6. Six. The idea of playing knight f6 is to delay capturing the d5 pawn for another move, avoiding the loss of time that black incurs in the queen takes d5 lines after knight c3. Knight c3 was played, knight takes d5, bishop c4, the knight retreats back, now the white bishop is under attack, bishop b3, knight c6, knight f3, e5, Black is grabbing more space, d3, bishop g4, h3 and bishop h5, which is a mistake. On the surface this looks like a normal move, black is still keeping the pin, but it turns out that this actually gives white a chance to gain advantage. Though the knight is pinned, but in this position Inbaud captured on e5 and sacrificed his queen. This is just an amazing move. Now if a move like knight takes e5 then simply white can capture on h5 and white is a pawn up or after knight takes e5 if a move like queen h4 then simply knight f3 and again no problem at all. Though I have to mention that this line is preferable for black but instead after knight takes e5 we see bishop takes d1 black accepted the queen sacrifice which actually allows white to start a devastating king hunt. Bishop takes f7 was played, king is 7 and now comes the second bishop, bishop g5 check, king d6, knight e4 check, white is also sacrificing the knight on e5, king takes e5, now comes f4, king d4 and rook takes d1, white is both winning the bishop on d1 and is also overprotecting the pawn on d3 square and right now the threat is c3 followed by f5 checkmate. For example, let's just make a random move. Right now the queen on d8 is hanging. If for example queen d7 then c3 check and then f5 checkmate. A very impressive checkmate I think. That's why after king d4 rook takes d1, black played king e3. But actually this looks very scary guys. This is like stepping into lion's den. Of course it's obvious that such a king on e3 square cannot survive. White castled king side. White is not even paying attention that the queen on d8 square is hanging. He is looking for a mating idea. Right now the threat is rook e1 check. If king d4 then c3 checkmate. For example again if you move away your queen then rook e1 check and then c3 checkmate. That's why after castling king side knight d4 was played. But anyways, we see rook e1 check, knight e2, and rook takes e2 check. This is crazy, guys. This guy is sacrificing his pieces one after another in the most fantastic way. King takes e2, bishop h5 check. Finally, after bishop takes f7, the light squared bishop is also joining the attack. King e3, rook f3 check, king d4. Well, if king e2, then rook g3 discovered check, and then rook e3 checkmate. Let's go back after rook f3 check, king d4 was played, and again, bishop f7, the light squared bishop is taking under control, the a to g8 diagonal is not allowing black king to escape, knight d5, a desperate move, here comes c3, and after knight takes c3, b takes c3, white announced a check, there is no way to remove the threat, and this is a checkmate. But like king is getting checkmated in the center of the board, look at this. I guess it's quite realistic to bring into life this king hunting idea in Scandinavian defense. That's why I would greatly recommend the novice players to study this game carefully because it's quite possible that one day your opponents will step into the trap and you will manage to surprise them with this deadly king hunt. 
Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you and for more games. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.